Welcome to Little Home Projects. In this video, I change out this standard thermostat with Honeywell's Wi-Fi Smart Thermostat. Before you start any electrical project, you need to make sure you turn off the power to the area you're working on. Don't just flip the switch, head to the breaker panel and turn it off from the source. To start, I need to remove the old thermostat. Mine just pops off, but yours might have screws or some other way of attachment. Before you go any further though, make sure to stop and take a picture of your current wiring diagram. This way you know exactly where the different wires come from. Thermostats have all sorts of different wiring configurations, and you'll want to make sure you don't get confused what was hooked up to what. Mine, the G, Y, W, R, were all connected, and it looks like I have a few extra wires that I can play with it as well. I removed the backing plate and had a look at the wires from the inside. I found right away that my wires were already labeled, which is good. If yours aren't labeled, I'd recommend labeling them right away because you don't want to get them confused. Most thermostats, when you buy them new, will come with a sticker pad that has all these letters that you can use to label your wires. Depending on how your wires are attached to your particular thermostat, you may need a small screwdriver to get them out. For me, I didn't have a small screwdriver, I couldn't find mine. So I took a piece of steel, flattened it out, just to the size it needed to be to, to fit the same size as a flat blade screwdriver, and that did the trick. The box for my thermostat is mounted vertically, and almost all the new thermostats are horizontal mount. So you'll need to keep this in mind when you're replacing an older thermostat. It may not be the right orientation, and you'll need to cover up that difference somehow. For me, I plan to just put in a plate, something along the bottom to cover that gap. I don't think it'll be very noticeable once everything's installed. This thermostat came with some mounting screws and some drywall plugs. I know that I have studs next to this box, so I'm not going to be using the drywall mounts, but I will just screw directly into the studs. You'll need to prep your wires for going into the new mounting plate. I stripped off about 3 eighths of an inch of the insulating plastic and made sure that the wires were nice and straight. The new mounting plate for this thermostat has a simple slide-in mounting mechanism, so you just press them in and they're nice and snug. Do this for all the different wires, making sure that your labeled wires go into the appropriate slots. Once the wires are inserted, give them a little tug to make sure they're not going to come out by accident. Um, once they're in all the way, they, they do grip nice and tight. I found the rough position of where I wanted it to be on the wall, got one of my first screws, and drilled it in. The mounting plate comes with two different holes, one that lets you level it, one that lets you slip from side to side. So once you've got it positioned, I took a small level and just made sure it was going to sit right. I started the second screw, got it in a little bit snug, just enough that I could still move it around, checked for level again, and then screwed it down tight. Now that I know that's going to work out just fine, I went and cut myself a piece of thick paper, just large enough to cover the hole at the bottom of the mounting plate. I'm going to wedge it in behind this plate and have the screws pull it down tight to make sure that it stays in place. I checked for level again, and tighten everything down again. With all that in place, it's time to attach the actual thermostat. It just clicks into a few spots on the mounting plate, and the wires and prongs all line up, and it just sits there nice and flush. Now, I get to turn the power back on and enjoy my new thermostat. I headed over to my breaker box, flipped the switch, left this running so you could see the whole boot up process, and I found that nothing happened. So, I had a look at the instruction manual, and it looks like it's expecting another wire to be used. The quick startup instructions that came with the thermostat show a wiring diagram using the C, G, Y, W, and R. So I'm a bit short on those wires, so I'm going to use one that's not being used and attach it. I'm going to have to go down into my crawl space though and check out to see if the wire is attached on the other side. I doubt that it is. So I stripped this wire, made sure it was straight, labeled it and put it into the thermostat. With the new black wire inserted, I can reattach the mounting plate using the screw holes I've already started. I needed to check for level again. I needed to make sure that my piece of paper was in the right spot again and tighten everything down. So now I'm down in my crawl space looking at my furnace and I can see right away that several of the wires aren't attached. I think both the C and the Y aren't attached to my furnace. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Y was attached to my thermostat upstairs, so I can refer back to the picture I took to make sure, but uh, I'll uh, relabel these wires and attach them. 
since I'm down here, I'm going to add labels to the other wires as well. I've got the stickers from this new thermostat, so I might as well use them. That way, if I ever do take the wires off of the furnace, I'll be able to put them back in the correct spots. I don't have any wire strippers, so I'm just using a razor knife to break the seal on the insulating plastic. Uh, it just peels off after that. I do this to both the white and the black wire, making sure to label them correctly, and I can move on to attaching them. It's just a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen off the screws and you can stick the wires in underneath the little clamp jaws that are underneath the screw and re-tighten it back down. Also because I'm already here looking at the wires, I took the time to check each of the other wires and made sure they were in there snugly and not loose or going to come up by accident. With everything finished, I can close up the furnace and head back upstairs and test the power out. Before I turn the power back on, I'm going to make sure to connect the thermostat to the mounting plate and then we can see how it boots up, hopefully. And success, I was really happy to see this turn on. I wasn't 100% sure that I was doing it right. I figured if you plug a wire into the right letter, it should just work, but here it did work and I'm very happy with it. So I went through the booting sequence, uh, the basic setup of how you want to use it. I spent some time searching for the Celsius versus Fahrenheit setting. It's in there somewhere, you'll have to dig for it, but it's there. It asks for a few options when it turns on the first time. Um, do you want to name it? Do you want to use it for heating and cooling? What kind of a furnace is it? Forced air or is it a, a circulatory one? Is it gas? Is it electric? For me, I know that mine's a 90 plus high efficiency furnace. So it asks for that as well. It also asks about the wiring that you use, which I thought was really helpful. What wires are hooked up? I'm like, well, look at that. These are the wires I have going. This is a really easy thing to answer because I just looked at these wires. So. I was really happy that it, it you know, justified the fact that I've hooked these things up correctly. And it finished booting up and then asked if it wanted to connect to my network and I definitely wanted to connect to my network. After choosing my network and it just connected right away, everything was straightforward. To finish building up it gives you a thermostat MAC address and a little co code so you can register this with Honeywell on their online system so you can control it from anywhere. I'm not going to do that right now but I took a picture of the information here so that I'd be able to access it later or there's a bunch of fun features in there as far as you know how you, how you want the colors to go, how you want the settings to work. Um, I uh, finished the setup with the proper date and time. If you do want to change the default Fahrenheit setting to Celsius, hit uh, go to the menu, the preferences button, then advanced preferences. This is where I got confused because it wouldn't show me what I wanted. But if you hit next here and go through these advanced preferences, it eventually gives you the option of changing the Celsius to Fahrenheit. I wanted to test pretty much right away if it was going to work, turn on my, my furnace. So I left the menus. Saw that I was currently set. Saw that I was currently set to 16 and a half degrees. So I pushed the button until it went up past tw the current temperature of 22.5, and just waited. And sure enough, in about 15 seconds, the furnace kicked on and it was working. So I would call that a success. Uh, happy with that. Much more sleek looking. Um, I'm looking forward to setting up. Uh, uh, programming a schedule as well as the thermostat knowing when or when we're not in the house so we can turn off the heat when we're not around. Uh, I think this is going to be a pretty good system. I'm looking forward to it. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching my video on the Honeywell Wi-Fi Smart Thermostat install. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from Little Home Projects, hit subscribe. I try to post a new video every week. If you have any questions for me or want to send me a note, hit something up in the comments below. I uh, look forward to reading them. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.